Hey guys, Sun here. Um, this is episode number two of the Privacy Guides. In last episode, we discussed how to configure macOS to make it more private. And in this episode, I'm going to discuss with you guys why I switched from Chrome to Firefox and why I believe you should do the same if you haven't already. Quick note, Chrome is developed by Google. Google is an advertising company. Google is known to invade people's privacy in order to learn more about what they're into, to target them with ads. And as Edward Snowden revealed, the NSA and other security agencies have direct access to the Google data set. Therefore, when you use Google, you're sharing whatever you do on the web with a whole bunch of people. So I highly recommend using Firefox. Firefox is an open source project. It's developed by a community of people who believe in privacy and freedom of speech. And uh, the Firefox development is funded by the Mozilla Foundation, which is a nonprofit. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, a huge part of the Mozilla funding comes from Google, but that's so that Google is a default search engine and that's something we can fix quite quickly. So without further ado, let's jump into this guide. Now, the first thing you want to do is open up Safari and search for Firefox. Now, mozilla.org, that's great. You click on download Firefox and you go ahead and download it. Now, that part is a little boring. I am sorry. In one minute, we'll be into the settings. So you want to open this up, click on Firefox. I don't know why I'm commentating, commentating this. I mean, <sighs> let's meditate. Okay, we drag and drop Firefox into the application folder. And once this is done, we're almost there. Okay, so we're now in Firefox. Um, a few things, we're gonna start by closing this and ejecting the installer. And now we wanna drag Firefox in place of Safari, quit Safari and remove it from the dock as we will no longer be using Safari. Yes. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, if we close those little windows, you'll notice that Google is a default search engine. That's something that we're gonna fix quite quickly. Um, let's start by opening up the preferences. I'm going to be walking you through all of those five tabs on the left. Uh, this video might take a little bit of time, but bear with me. It's worth every minute of your time. So first things first, Firefox is not your default browser. We want to go ahead and make Firefox our default browser. Whoop. Yes. Uh, now, nothing is very important from a privacy standpoint in all of this, except for network settings. If you go into network settings, you want to make sure you enable DNS over HTTPS. I think this merits its own episode. Um, I'll discuss what DNS is in that episode. For the time being, what that means is when your browser is trying to uh, query domain name services, probably that's Chinese to you. Um, Again, I'll discuss this in another episode, but it essentially, uh, how can I simplify this? Okay, when you go on a website, say you go on sunnutsen.com, your browser needs to know what the address IP of sunnutsen.com is in order to resolve it and go and fetch the information from the server. This process, until quite recently, was done in clear text, meaning anyone between you and the DNS server could know that you're trying to figure out what the IP address is for is for sunnewton.com. And that is allowing your internet service provider or your government to know that you're interested in whatever it is on sunnewton.com. Now, that may be totally fine if you're going on Facebook, but it might not be that great if you're going on to freedom of speech websites or things like that that reveal uh, some of the opinions you have and stuff like this. So enabling DNS over HTTPS is a great way of mitigating that. Um, okay, now moving on to home. 
Um, this is kind of like personal things. This is not, it doesn't have to do with privacy, but when we open a new tab, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. I tend to remove top sites recommended by pocket highlights and snippets uh, so that I now have a clean uh, page here. While we're at it, I tend to remove this and this and we'll discuss this one in a second, Firefox account. Um, okay, so moving on to search. Well, the default search engine, as I mentioned earlier, is Google. We wanna switch this to DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is a search engine similar to Google, but it doesn't correlate all of your searches, your identity, which is fantastic for your privacy. Um, I recommend not enabling search suggestions. The reason for that is when you open a tab and you just copy paste something into the address bar, it's not gonna try to search for results right away. It's gonna wait for you to press enter. So if you paste a password by mistake in here and type, uh, uh, it's not gonna submit a search, you, you know, submitting your password to DuckDuckGo. So that's really a privacy thing. Now in one-click search engines, I remove everything except DuckDuckGo and we're done. Now, moving on to the most important uh, tab of them all, privacy and security. Um, I recommend using custom and disabling all third-party cookies. Now, as this says here, it might break some websites. In my uh, experience, very few websites are broken. The ones that break tend to be websites that are very intrusive from a privacy standpoint. Uh, so that's good. So we can go ahead and reload all tabs. Now, send websites that do not track signal. I recommend always enabling the do not track signal. Um, it's not a standard that a lot of websites follow, unfortunately, but the intentions are good and there's nothing we can lose by enabling it. Cookies and site data. The way I set up my Firefox is that when Firefox is closed, all cookies and site data is deleted. That means that if ever I close Firefox and go through customs or whatever, and someone forces me to open my computer, all of my browsing history is not accessible because it's been deleted. Um, now that also means that all the websites you, you've logged into, well, you won't be logged in anymore. And the sol th that can be a little frustrating, but I think that the gains, like the security and privacy gains, outweigh the loss. Um, so I would really recommend enabling this. Logins and passwords. I personally recommend uh, disabling all of this. I recommend using a password manager, like a standalone password manager to manage all of your passwords uh, versus relying on Firefox to do that in the context of Firefox. So I recommend not enabling this. Um, now your history, I mentioned earlier that you don't want when you're going through customs or if someone seizes your computer or if someone like a hacker wants to learn more about your habits, you don't want your history to be available when you close Firefox. So I recommend going to custom and making sure clear history when Firefox closes is enabled. Now moving on, this is okay. Firefox data collection and use, I recommend disabling everything. Although Firefox is a good actor in the privacy space, I still don't want my browser to be uploading stuff to Firefox, uh, like crash reports and things like that. Okay, so we're done. Now that last tab uh, is an interesting one. Firefox has developed a pretty elegant solution to synchronizing your preferences, uh, bookmarks and stuff like this between different of your browsers. That was in great English, but anyways. Um, so if you have Firefox on your smartphone and you have Firefox on your desktop, it's a way to synchronize that across your devices. That may sound appealing at first. My suggestion is to really try to remain, uh, uh, to retain as much of our sovereignty as possible. So I recommend not doing that for a bunch of reasons that are too long to explain here. But the short story is this is very private. The stuff you browse is very private. Even though it's encrypted on your computer before being sent to Firefox, I recommend, I highly recommend uh, not enabling sync. And as a matter of fact, to make sure that 
we never enable it, uh, there's a neat little thing that we can do uh, using Firefox advanced configuration. And that is, okay, it says proceed with caution, like don't go ahead and just change anything here, you're gonna completely break Firefox. But that specific one, identity fx accounts dot enabled is true if you put that to false and then quit Firefox. When you reopen it uh, and go to preferences, that tab is gone and the little icon here is gone. So I highly recommend doing that. Um, now, there are a few extensions that I always install. Um, one of them is Privacy Badger. So Privacy Badger is an extension that detects all the trackers that are trying to track you across the web and it disables them. It's not an ad blocker and I'm personally, I'm against ad blockers. I think people that create content on the web, they need to earn a living. And in order to do so, unfortunately, people are not willing to pay for content these days, so they have to monetize through advertising. Now, if done, if done well, that's perfectly fine. What's not fine is how Google tries to track you across multiple websites and profile you and stuff like this to retarget you. Privacy Badger takes care of that, or at least part of it. So we want to add that, and I personally allow it when I'm in private mode because I want to make sure that even in private mode I'm not tracked. Um, another one that I always enable is uh, HTTPS everywhere, and I also want to allow it in private mode and then if you go here you want to make sure that this is enabled that will block all unencrypted connections meaning that you're less susceptible to man in the middle attacks and stuff like this now one last extension that i highly recommend is uh whoops containers uh is a firefox extension uh, that's actually developed by the firefox team um, and that extension is used to create uh, containers, uh, for example, one for Firefox, one for Google, that uh, essentially compartmentalizes the way you use Firefox. When you're in a Firefox container, say one for Facebook, well, anything within that container will be locked to the container, meaning Firefox, uh, not Firefox, but Facebook cannot read cookies from outside the container. So when, when uh, Jesus, Firefox, Facebook, I'm confused. When Facebook tries to cross you, track you across all the websites, well, it will only be able to do so within the context of that container. Uh, so that's really great for your privacy. So I recommend adding this for sure. Um, and the last part of this guide is how to actually go about using uh, the Firefox container system by the way, the key concept here is something we call compartmentalization. In the privacy and security space, that is super important. It will actually have its own episode later, uh, and we'll discuss things like Cubes OS and using uh, virtual machines on your computer to do separate things. So if you're into this more advanced stuff, smash the subscribe button. We'll get to that shortly. Um, okay, let's go ahead and set up containers. So, uh, going through the little wizard here. Oh, start syncing. No, never enable syncing. <laughs> okay, um, I go ahead and usually delete the default containers as I don't see great value in them and I like to use my own. Once this is done, I recommend firing up Firefox, uh, not Firefox, Facebook. Why am I mixing those two? They're like, Oh, sorry, Firefox. Okay, yeah, while we're here, actually, I tend to remove the pocket thing. I don't know why they're pushing that so much. If I click on container and I click on plus, uh, I can create a Facebook container and assign it color blue. Once this is done, if I open up uh, this and I go on facebook.com, actually opening this other tab was kind of useless, we now see that it's the same as usual. We're in Firefox, but we're into the we're inside of the Facebook container. And if I hit that button again, the UX is a little awkward. Bear with me. And I say always open in Firefox. That means that if I open a tab that is not in uh, open in Firefox, I need to do it again. <laughs> um, sorry. Always open in Facebook. 
if I go here and I type, type facebook.com, it's gonna ask me, do you wanna open this site in your assigned container? Yes, always do so, open. That means that even if I start going on Facebook or if I click a Facebook link, when I'm not in the Facebook container, it's gonna pop it open into the Facebook container. So that's really, really good. Now, Facebook has other domain names. The way uh, the containers work is using domain names or host names. So if you go on messenger.com, which is also a Facebook property, it doesn't know that you wanna open that inside of Facebook. So you wanna click here and say, oh, sorry. Hey, sorry, 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 same mistake as before. You wanna start by going into the Facebook container, opening up Messenger within the container, and then you click here and say, always open in Facebook. Now, I recommend doing this for Instagram as well, and always open in Facebook. Um, and now what's this last one? Yeah, WhatsApp. I don't even know, I don't use WhatsApp personally. WhatsApp, maybe it's not even written the right way. Okay, here it is, WhatsApp. Uh, I don't think you can actually use WhatsApp uh, using like a browser per se. I think you need a native, native app, but you know what? We'll just slap it open into Facebook as well. So now that we've done that, if we go ahead and type Instagram.com, it's going to ask us to open it in the Firef uh, Firefox, in the Facebook. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, and we're good. And the same for WhatsApp. I don't even remember how to actually write it, so I'll skip that one. Um, okay, so there you have it. You're now using Firefox instead of Chrome. Um, oh yeah, one last little thing. If you go ahead and click on Toolbar, Toolbar, um, sorry, bookmarks toolbar this is what i actually use to register websites that i visit all the time so say a website that i visit all the time is um hmm which one could i open okay reddit so say i'm a huge reddit fan and i go on reddit all the time if you click on the little star here and select uh, bookmark toolbar and say okay well reddit is now here and it's readily accessible so i personally use all of this and you can also create folders to put all of the links that i visit all the time uh, since when i close firefox all of the history is gone uh, so i'll just show what that looks like if i quit firefox here and reopen it if i go into history it's blank Okay, so that was a pretty long episode. Uh, maybe a few of you are still here with me. Um, I really recommend using Firefox versus all other browsers. Firefox is also available on mobile. I may create another video on how to configure the mobile version. There's a lot less settings that we can actually play with, but if that's something that you're interested in, you can put a comment and I'll consider doing an episode on that. I think we're good. You now have a really private Firefox. Congratulations. All right, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.